All right, hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to be doing a counter movement jump analysis in Excel for everyone. A little bit of a tutorial, and this is a pretty common test in uh, sport and performance. And um, so we're going to dig into this a little bit. And this is from a dual force platform setup. So you'll notice here we have just one trial of a counter movement jump. We have time data, and then two force plate data. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually add these together. This is a relatively simple function and um, you know the nice thing is that Excel does some pretty convenient things for us and one of them being we can sort of copy this function all the way down so uh, most people familiar with Excel this is not a new trick for them but um, it's a game changer for people that don't know it. So I have these uh, graphs already set up to sort of uh, post what we got here and um, this data looks good. This is what a counter movement jump should look like. If you'll notice, we're standing still right here. This is when we unload to get some downward momentum. Once we pass up here, we'll be decelerating, and the bottom of the uh, counter movement might be somewhere around this point. From there, we have concentric or upward motion in, in this time area, and then we have uh, zero when we're off the plate, meaning we've... Um, left the plate and we're in midair here. So right in the middle here might be the peak of our jump height. And so we're gonna work out how to uh, get through to acceleration, uh, velocity, and displacement. And now keep in mind these are all the um, acceleration, velocity, and displacement of the center of mass. So the first thing that we wanna do is calculate our acceleration and we kind of work our way up. Eventually we'll calculate power um, just as kind of an extra thing to do. So when we first start with acceleration, we need to think about F equals MA. Now keep in mind, this is the sum of forces. During the um, jump, we have a ground reaction force, but we also have the force of gravity to deal with. And so I'm gonna show you kind of how to put this in here, but essentially we're gonna have the sum of forces divided by mass is going to equal acceleration. Now you can get mass from your ground reaction force data. Let me... Uh get out of this cell here real quick and if I look at this graph I'm right around 900 to 910 newtons when I'm standing still so we can use that to calculate mass and I've already you know I just chose to do 905 as uh, newtons as their mass and when you do um, I'll show you kind of how this calculation works I just do 905 divided by gravity to get our mass in kilograms now when I look at the sum of forces this is how it's going to play out. We're going to have ground reaction force as being positive. So we're just going to select this one. And we're actually going to subtract 905. Okay. Now I don't want this cell to change when I copy it down. So I'm going to put a dollar sign between uh, before the column so that the column doesn't change. And I'll put a dollar sign before the cell number or a uh, row number so that the row number doesn't change. So it'll just be 905 the whole time. Now I'm going to put a parenthesis around this. This is our sum of forces that we've done. And then we're going to divide that by our mass. Now the mass is actually the kilogram. It's not the 905 anymore. And again, I don't want that cell to change at all. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before the column and before the row numbers or letters. Okay. Now once I hit enter, now I have some information here that I can use. This is only one um, point, obviously, and so we're going to click this down for the whole um, for the whole thing. Now, what you'll notice is we have zero acceleration, which is good. We have some negative acceleration when we get some downward momentum. We have positive acceleration, which will still be downward motion, but um, sort of eccentric braking to uh, eventually halt that downward motion. And then we have liftoff, and what we want to do to kind of check this is say, okay, when we're off the plate, do we have values of 9.8? And it does look, in fact, that we do. We have a value of negative 9.8, which is exactly what we expect uh, mechanically. So these are kind of the first two steps. Sum your total forces, um, and then calculate acceleration using the sum of forces equal to MA. Now the next step is when we start to integrate. And um, for those familiar with calculus, um, we're going to use this principle that we need to make this uh, cumulative. 
And so I'll show you kind of what I mean, and I'll show you kind of the where people might get a little off. So all you're going to do is you're going to multiply the acceleration times that change in time. And if you look over in this left column, all of our change in times are going to be 0 .001. So we'll go with 0 0.001. Okay. Now this is not going to be completely correct yet. But you'll notice that once I fill that column in, I get this graph, and it looks exactly the same as acceleration. You should be, you know, maybe scratching your head like, well, why is that? The problem is, is that we want to make this second one and every one after it cumulative. They want to be the change in velocity from where it was at before. And so all I'm going to do in this second cell is I'm going to say plus the previous cell. And then when I propagate that down, you'll notice this vertical velocity starts to look a lot more like what you should be expecting. We have all of our negative values here. This is going to be our counter movement phase between uh, you know, this point and here. Then we'll have positive motion or positive velocity. And then right around here is going to be our you know, peak velocity and takeoff be sh very shortly after. And then this nice straight line down is going to be our uh, free fall. That'll be, you know, even though we're going up and then down, that's sort of a nice uh, parabolic uh, displacement that we'll see later. And so we can look at this as our uh, free fall. And these numbers look, or this graph looks really appropriate. Now, one of the cool things about um, Excel is that, you know, the way we've kind of set up our columns here, we can just drag this over and I'll actually drag this one over as well just because we had that cumulative thing. In this case, we're now, if I click this, you'll see that I have velocity times our change in time. So now instead of using acceleration, we've just moved over a column. All right, and I'm going to take this cell, and if I is cooperating, I'll get it to go down. All right. So now we have vertical displacement of the center of mass. My graphs are doing, getting a little wonky here. And you'll notice there might be some drift and um, you know, these are some low cost uh, portable force plates uh, from PASCO. Um, sometimes it might just be that the athlete, you know, stepped off the plate or something like that. And so it thinks that we're free falling even though we're not. Um, we're typically gonna focus on just this part during counter movement jump. So by the time they land, we're not, even though the landing part is definitely an aspect that we might assess, um, for this analysis, we're just worried about the jump. So now we have all these variables, and you'll notice my peak displacement, which would be the top of that jump, is right in line pretty much with the middle of my flight phase here. And so that's good little cues. Um, if I were to put this vertical velocity right, you know, same size next to this graph, we would see right around this zero point vertical velocity would coincide with this peak displacement and mid flight here. Now let's say you want to calculate some other variables. Um, you know, power is a pretty common one. Well, this one's relatively easy. We can just take equals velocity times the force. Now, once I do this, And we get something that looks like this. Okay, and so that would be, you know, pretty normal. Um, you know, you could, uh, you could do like a sum of forces here. So let's let's just see what that looks like. It would essentially just kind of scale it down a little bit. So I'm going to change this. Put an extra parentheses, minus 905. Let's see what happens. I've never actually uh, tried this. Yeah, see, it looks a little wonky. So I prefer to just do, um, you know, the vertical force. That's how I've always done it. And then it doesn't look all weird like this. So here's the video. Um, hope this helps you guys. Again, I'm going to undo these, uh, what I just did, so that it looks normal again. Um, so Hopefully this helps, and uh, you can pull out little discrete variables. You know, you could look at a curve and say, "Hey, okay, this value is, you know, 2028 um, for vertical ground reaction forces. 
uh, you know, maybe you're looking at peak power. This would be kind of like right here. Um, maybe you want to look at mean power. Maybe you want to look at takeoff velocity, you know, things like that. Maybe you want to calculate jump height from your time in the air. Maybe you want to calculate jump height using your uh, peak velocity, your takeoff velocity, um, or and see how some of those methods might coincide and um, maybe change how the peak jump height is is made. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video and um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon.